AI is a huge factor in today's SaaS development. One of the challenges is how do you take uh, these opportunities for AI and integrate them into their current systems or to build them outright new systems. We built him a scheduling system. The AI scribe will essentially fill their notes for them. The doctor is seeing about 40 to 50 patients a day in an eight hour period and having his notes completed. Today we are diving into the transformative world of AI-powered SaaS platforms, focusing on how a leading Canadian firm is helping businesses in regulated industries grow with confidence and clarity. If you have an idea that's crystallized in your mind, please, please go ahead and attempt to make it happen. Everybody needs to be an entrepreneur. That's my, my goal for, for the world. This is Kripa Anand and welcome to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast, where we explore the strategic insights and innovative approaches empowering Canadian entrepreneurs to build and scale successful ventures. Today we are diving into the transformative world of AI-powered SaaS platforms, focusing on how a leading Canadian firm is helping businesses in regulated industries grow with confidence and clarity. In the rapidly evolving digital landscape, building scalable custom software solutions that prioritize data security, privacy, and compliance is paramount. Our guest is a seasoned technology leader with a passion for blending te technical expertise with human-centered design to create products that not only achieve organizational goals, but also meaningfully enhance human experiences. Joining us today is Demi Ekbayami, co-founder and chief technology officer at Polymath Global. With a career spanning two decades in product management, IT consulting, and creative technologies, Demi is spearheaded the development of scalable cloud platforms and digital products in healthcare, finance, and the creative industries. So before further ado, let's welcome the special guest. Demi, welcome to the podcast. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thanks, Kripa. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. Now, Demi, you've spearheaded the developments of scalable cloud platforms and digital products for clients across regulated industries, right? You're a leader in scaling tech companies in Canada. I wouldn't be wrong in saying that. So from your experience, let's start by understanding what are the biggest challenges and opportunities that you see uh, others facing in this industry, specifically in Canada? Yeah, so the Canadian industry, um, specifically SaaS product development, um, has gone through several cycles. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we started off with things like Salesforce, where users were able to build applications and essentially serve right. their customers on those platforms. Um, but one of the challenges is how do you then um, move with the times? Mm -hmm. And as we know, AI is a huge um, factor right. in today's SaaS development. And what a lot of um, founders find, and also the SMEs, is that their systems are really old mm -hmm. and you know they need to upgrade. Right. Um, and so one of the challenges is how do you take uh, these opportunities for AI and integrate them into their current systems or to build them outright new systems. And so that challenge is something that we essentially are, are solving for. And uh, we find that a lot of our uh, SMEs that come to us uh, have very good value from the products that we build for them. No, definitely. So on that note, what will you say? What exactly does it mean for the Canadian innovation and the uh, leading tech entrepreneurs that are coming in? Yeah, so what this means for Canadian in in innovation is basically value. So, mm -hmm. so value in, the term in terms of um, being able to raise uh, money right. um, for their own businesses, yeah. but also to increase their revenue. Uh, one of the things that AI allows for is increased productivity, and it also enhances you know, the scalability of their platforms, but yeah. also improves their intellectual property because they can now expand their reach to different you know sorts of areas and so what we find is that you know in, specifically in the canadian ecosystem we're going to find more um, entrepreneurs mm -hmm. especially younger entrepreneurs who are ready to tackle some of the really interesting problems that we have in canada to help the economy grow no wow that's a very you know uh 
a clear perspective, I'd say, because uh, AI right now is being used to take over the repetitive tasks that we have so that our brain can get free for the more productive things. So thank you for highlighting that. Nice. Uh, now, let's explore what it takes to build SaaS products with AI and compliance in mind, uh, especially for regulated industries. Now, uh, Polymath Global specializes in building scalable AI-powered SaaS platforms for clients across regulated industries, specifically in healthcare and finance. Uh, how exactly do you build software for highly regulated industries while ensuring data security, privacy, which is a major concern, and compliance? And how exactly are you guys solving that problem? Yeah, so at the end of the day, it comes down to infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, the U.S. has a, a much stronger um, base for data centers and right. different um, systems that support our cloud systems here in Canada. Right. Um, however, you know, the U.S. has issues, um, including things like the Patriot Act, where the government can go in and take, you know, or have access to your data right. at any point in time. It has limitations. It has yeah. limitations. And so, first of all, we need to build a stronger ecosystem of data centers in Canada. And there are some, but they're more enterprise business-related fo right. and focused. Yeah. And so, essentially, what we do is we build a micro data center infrastructure mm -hmm. that can support multiple startups, as well as founders and SMEs across Canada. So it will be a distributed architecture. And that data will be here in Canada. So first of all, we don't have to worry about some of the issues that we have in, in, in the States. Right. Um, secondly, uh, we have to focus on compliance measures. So there are certain bodies that take care of um, security and compliance. Right. Um, and one of the things that we have made sure that we did very from the very beginning is be SOC 2 compliance. Hmm. So SOC 2 is essentially the industry standard for security and privacy across um, our industry. Right. Um, and then there are other regulations and, and uh, systems like HIPAA, um, FIPA and uh, PIPETA, which are essentially the privacy acts in Canada. And so we align ourselves with those uh, measures and ensure that our systems are built from the ground up mm -hmm. with security in mind. That's a very clear strategic approach, Tammy. It's evident that in regulated industries, compliance is not an afterthought, but a core part of a productive development. Uh, that's amazing. Now, many visionary entrepreneurs, especially those who are, uh, you know, technical, uh, have great ideas, but struggle to bring them to life, right? Uh, you have a great story that perfectly illustrates how a tech partner can help. Now, uh, on that note, Demi, can you share that story with your partnership with Medical Home? Uh, what's the story there? Our listeners would love to know. Yeah, so Medical Home is an application, a SaaS application that we built, and essentially the owner, who is a doctor, uh, found several issues in within the healthcare system, specifically primary care, mm -hmm. and giving p care to patients. So an example is they would call into their office, they either wouldn't get in contact with the staff at the front desk, oh. or they would find a lot of miscommunication. loss of miscommunication, yeah. lost opportunities to see patients. And one of the most important things for doctors is to see their patients. Of course, yeah. And so he came to us with this problem and also found other opportunities that would help him improve his services to mm -hmm. his patients. And so uh, we built him a scheduling system uh, on his um, medical home platform that basically uses uh, single sign-on for patients and doctors to essentially book and then with that, we automated the system so that when the patient comes into the clinic, it's just simply a click for the doctor to then pull up their notes. Right. And so have that conversation mm -hmm. with, the, with the patients and the AI scribe will essentially fill their notes for them. And wow. one of the things that this physician has uh, mentioned to us is that the number of calls that they received, usually they had about 100 to 120 calls a day, mm -hmm. has reduced to 20 to 30 calls. But also, they've also improved their productivity within the clinic. So uh, regularly a doctor would spend 12 hours a day, eight of those hours with patients, the other four hours filling in notes. Right. Now he's, and with that, they would only see maybe about 35 patients a day. Now the doctor is seeing about 40 to 50 patients a day in an eight hour period and having his notes completed. So for the doctor, he's happy because he's seeing his patients, but uh, the patients are also happy because they have better accessibility to their doctors, 
but at the end of the day, the doctor is also making more money, which makes them happy as well. Wow. So, you know, uh, this is a perfect example of a win-win situation exactly. where everyone's happy uh, and there's a leveling feel for everyone. Uh, that's a very powerful and inspiring anecdote, uh, Dami. It beautifully illustrates what happens when, uh, you know, uh, the clinicians and product teams truly collaborate, building a bridge between medicine and technology. That's amazing. Absolutely. Hello, Canadian entrepreneurs. Are you a non-technical founder with a great idea but not sure how to build it? Learn from Demi Egbayami, CEO at Polymath Global, about how to build a SaaS product with AI and compliance in mind and how to find a tech partner who can help you bring your vision to life. Now let's continue our conversation with Tammy. All right, it's time for a quick break right here, but don't go anywhere because after the break, we'll explore how AI is reshaping regulated industries and driving measurable impact. Stay tuned. Hey, you think you know UPS? Yeah, that's us. Everybody knows that. You know what you didn't know? This. Okay, try to keep up. Ocean, us. Ground, rail, air, so us. Guess who? Us. Customs cleared, borders cleared, done. Us, us. Still with me? Wait for it. Boom. Us. Intelligent, automated, fulfillment. Us. Yep. Healthcare too. Digital your thing? Yeah, well, book it, ship it, track it. You feeling me yet? Yep, that's all us. That's all UPS. Welcome back, listeners. Now it's time to dive into the transformative world of AI in regulated industries and see how Polymath Global is empowering businesses to innovate and scale safely. Now, uh, let's look at the broader impact of AI in regulated industries and how Polymath is helping shape the future. Uh, now, uh, firstly, AI is no longer a buzzword, right? From mm -hmm. your perspective, how do you think AI is going to uh, take over this industry? Yeah, so I see AI as a mental prosthetic. Mm -hmm. And um, not in the sense that we're disabled, but in the sense that a prosthetic is something that augments and helps you improve. Right. It enables your, you to do better. It enables you yeah. to do better. And so um, AI right now is a huge shift mm -hmm. for everyone in terms of how work will be done and how we optimize and perform at our best. Right. And so what I'm finding um, in this industry specifically is that we're going to see less labor in terms of labor intensive tasks, mm -hmm. you know, lots of brain power that you have to do if you're an accountant or, right. you know, a physician or whatever the case may be, so that you can actually focus on your skill sets mm -hmm. to enable the people who you're servicing. And so one of the things that I'm, I'm finding with AI is it just makes work so much easier to complete. It's not perfect. It's, it's going to keep on improving. Yeah. Yeah. However, the infrastructure that's required to support these tools has to be there, which is one of the core reasons why we have our own infrastructure from the get-go, because we get to build and fine-tune and customize it for our, sp our specific clients mm -hmm. very, very um, specifically. Well, you mentioned something very interesting there, the skills. So now with AI coming into the picture, do you think uh, the younger generation, the, uh, the emerging generation, are they going to have to change the skill set that they are working on right now? So I also have a background in psychology, oh, <laughs> and wow, uh, this is uh, co specifically cognitive psychology. Okay. And I've had this debate um, both from a technical and academic standpoint. And one of the challenges that a lot of academics find is that when students use AI, they don't actually learn uh, and absorb the information, i.e. they're using it to write notes, right. etc. But if you are able to give them the stimulus and the mm. understanding of how to work with AI, we will see them performing better than previous generations. And so at the end of the day, it's all about the skill set that you have, but also do you know how to implement that skill set? And so AI is going to help us improve that overall. 
That's amazing. Definitely. The way that we are learning uh, is changing the world around us. And uh, on that note, Dami, uh, what are some compelling real world AI applications in healthcare, finance, and other such regulated industries that come to your mind? Yeah, so we built another tool uh, for the fin fintech industry, specifically for wealth managers. Mm -hmm. And one, we, one of the things that we found was that it just helps them close deals faster. Um, and what I mean by that is, for instance, it would take maybe four to six weeks for um, a fintech, um, someone in wealth management, to essentially close a deal with a client. Mm -hmm. And what they found is that using our tool, it reduces the amount of contact points that they have with their right. clients and also takes care of a lot of the compliance issues because with mm -hmm. AI, with other tools, especially um, custom AI tools that aren't like ChatGPT that use all the world's information right. uh, and you're using your own specific information for your domain, what you find is that it just helps improve not just the, um, the quality of the work, but also helps them stick with compliance measures and privacy as well. Wow, the impact of AI in regulated industries is clearly immense, and Polymath Global is at the forefront of helping businesses leverage its potential. Uh, kudos to you and your entire team for achieving that. Thank you. Now, uh, Dami, if I were to give you a time machine right now and say we were to travel five or seven years into the future, when we get out of that time machine, how exactly do you envision Polymath Global changing? Oh my gosh, so uh, I'm going to start this with an anecdote. When I was a kid, you know, I used to watch Star Trek. I'm a Trekkie. Wow. And um, I used to wonder, like, oh my, and this was back in the 90s, so I'm aging myself, right, as a, you know, 40-something-year-old. Oh my but, God, you look 40 at all. <laughs> right, thank you, I appreciate that. But, you know, when I saw those things on, on Star Trek, I was super intrigued, and I was always wondering, what will the future look like? I want these things that, you know, are on Star Trek right now, like the holodeck, right. the transponder, and things like that. And we can see that in today's world. Mm. So what I see um, seven years from now for Polymath Global is a global system of data centers and networks mm. that will basically mimic the biggest data centers that are currently here. And all of these will serve places that are generally ignored um, mm. by you know larger companies, such as the Caribbean, Africa, and you know, countries in Asia. And essentially, I want to see our system essentially be like the enterprise on Star Trek, right? Wow. This big, huge <laughs> yeah. community of people all working together with technology yeah. to enhance human um, potential. Wow. I couldn't have asked for a more perfect answer. You've painted quite a picture here, uh, Dami. Um, the future definitely looks very colorful and very powerful. Uh, and I'm loving this conversation. Uh, definitely, we're going to invite you one more time where we can dive into such deeper conversations. But for now, before we let you go, if there's one piece of final advice that you have for our listeners today, something that you want them to remember about this episode, about Dami, about Polymath Global, what would you tell them and why? Well, I would tell them that if you have an idea that's crystallized in your mind, please, please go ahead and attempt right. to make it happen. Mm. Because yes, the world is full of ideas. However, if you find a technology partner such as ourselves who yeah. can take away the technical burden that you normally would have as a non-technical founder, mm. um, go for it. Because the world is changing, AI is changing the world, and everybody needs to be an entrepreneur. That's my my goal for, for the world. So. Um, to your listeners, please reach out to us at any point in time if you have an idea that needs to be built. Wow, and what's the best way to reach you out if they want to? So you can reach us on our website, https polymath.global, and um, you can also reach me by email at dami at pgrinc.com. That's amazing. Dami, it was such a pleasure having you on the podcast. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise and vision with us. It's my pleasure, Kripa. Thank you so much for having me. All right, that was an insightful conversation with Demi Egbeyami, co-founder and CEO at Polymath Global, on his journey scaling a tech company, building SaaS products with AI and compliance, serving non-technical founders, the impact of AI in regulated industries, and Polymath's vision for the future. To all of our listeners, thank you so much for tuning in to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast. We really appreciate your continued support. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast for more expert insights and resources that can help your business thrive. Also, don't forget to visit our website, canadiansme.ca. And lastly, a very special thank you to our podcast partners, RBC.
UPS, A1 Global College, ADB, and Google for their ongoing commitments to empowering SMBs in Canada. So until next time, keep innovating and striving for success. And we'll see you in the next episode. Kripa Anand, signing off.